What's up guys, today I am going to be doing a little bit different video. Um, as you can see in the background, this is our shop. So this is the shop I've been filming all the Johnny Fabs videos. Uh, today I'm going to show you how we heat the shop. Uh, it's been about five years since we built it. And uh, so we've been heating it with a wood burner. And I'm going to show you guys that and before we make some changes on it. So we wanted to give you guys a little rundown on how we heat the shop. And so I'm going to have my dad show you guys what he built to heat the shop. So we're going to get into it. Hey everybody, I'm Johnny Fapp's dad. Uh, we built this about five years ago. Uh, it's done, uh, six years ago. It's done five winters uh, for our shop and then the house is tied into it. Uh, we made it out of all kinds of parts we could find. In fact, we made it out of uh, um, two propane tanks. One is 500 gallon propane tank, this outside one. And then there's a 250 gallon one inside of, uh, of that uh, with an exhaust pipe out the back. And why we got it in here is uh, we, we did uh, uh, like four winters with it, um, four or five winters with it. And we just wanted to make some changes. I wanted to make some changes to it when I designed it. There's some things that I should have did different uh, and just wanted to kind of help everybody who's maybe thinking about building one to give it some thought. Um, some of the simple stuff that, I, that I've just done to it is that we brought it in and we raised the whole building up. There's like a tin building that goes around this. Why I did that is, um, is I, by the time I get this insulated, and I've learned over the years I needed more and more insulation, it, it gets pretty packed with insulation, so I needed a taller building to accommodate that. I also needed some doors to access everything because I kept taking the panels off and you really don't want to be doing that all the time. So I did a real cheap way is I took an old um, washing machine side panels and I just welded them together and we just made just a simple door, you know, we'll put a latch on the bottom and you don't always have to spend a lot of money um, when you build these things and we didn't. We really built this whole thing for $800 with electronics and the computer and um, all the draft control um, stuff. We did it all for $800 and we got four, four to five years of heating out of it, um, which is a real advantage. Um, some of the other things I did on this is um, learning. Everybody says, well, draw off the bottom for your pumps. And I, I've been drawing off in the past off the side. I welded in these bungs here because I always thought, you know, the water's warmer at the top, let's get that water. Uh, so we're changing it because all the professionals say I should be drawing off the bottom and putting cold water, returning water, back in the top. So we're going to try that. I'll let you know if it works or not, if it works better. We also added a whole bunch more bungs, if you're building one, um, that have sensors in them. Uh, and they go to controlling aquastats. And just to get temperature around it, I learned, you know, you can, you can have one in one place, but it, you know, you're better off having multi-options for that. And um, the other thing is what we've added to this one. I used to have water run up to this building. When it'd get low on water, I'd have to get the hose out. Sometimes the hose would be frozen. It was always a pain. So I decided when we redid it that I would put uh, water fill insulated so it's going to get heat off the um, boiler and then water supply and so when I need to add water which is usually every three, three weeks I can just simply turn this on and this is kept warm by the water lines going to the house and it fills it and then we also put a stack up there that has a float in it we made a float so we can really tell water level instead of climbing up there and checking it with a, with a uh, pole uh, that's some of the changes we made um, we're making major changes up here. What, when I originally built this, and if you're going to build one, you just cut out um, a propane tank, you weld the plate on it, um, and then that piece that you know you cut out of your front plate becomes your door. And my door had um, this was powered by a computer over here, and this computer senses water temperature, and then it powered down. You can see where the you know line used to be. It powered down, I'll take this off, um, this little door cover I made, and this worked fine, it worked fine, it was basically just a, um, a, uh, um, just a 
draft door. So power would energize this, it would magnetize it open, air would go in, work fine. You know, real simple. Gravity would shut it. So if you're going to make one, you know, I just made it so I had a counterweight on it, pull it down. Real simple, real monster garage. But, you know, and I used an old hinge up here. You can see the hinge pins. I've been starting to take this apart because I'm going to change it. Um, and, you know, there's not a whole lot to them. Um, I also made some changes in here. This was the baffle door for the air to come in. So I've started to cut this apart because I'm going to add a fan to this. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to convert this over to this style, which is what most people have if you spent a lot of money on your uh, draft is open, fan kicks it on. Hopefully it's going to give me more heat quicker. And um, But, you know, again, our goal was, you know, try to make it simple, try to make it functional. And these things go from anywhere from $4,000 to $10,000, and we did it for $800. Um, basically just made the door hinge stuff. If, you, if you're thinking about making one, this was really simple, you know. Gave myself a little tuber on there so my hand wasn't warm. Uh, made it adjustable over here. You can see the adjustable tabs, adjustable over here. And you basically just shut the door, boom, worked fine. Inside, if you look, uh, I've changed a bunch of things. I used to have, back in the original build, I had a baffle that came down. And if, you, if you're much for boilers, central boiler does that. They do a baffle, so the smoke rolls around and it has to go down and out. Uh, yeah, I can probably give you a light. Uh, you, can, it, it, you can see it. Can you it? see? Yeah. All right. So the, some of the changes I've made is I decided to cut that baffle out. And I want to control how much uh, my back baffle. So I made it uh, controllable. Basically, there is a chain in there that can adjust the back flap. The back flap can come out with a pin. And let me take a look at that, and I'll show you how I can adjust it down with a chain. Basically, it lowers it down, and then the bottom is on a hinge, and then I can just flap that over. I'll, I'll put it down so you can see. Reason I made that change is I want the adjustability on uh, my flow, and I we burn any kind of wood. We just throw. I know a lot of these wood burners are uh, high end. They take have to have dry wood. We throw everything in here uh, because we're not that fussy. And let me just adjust that, and you can see. So there's one adjustment all the way down. And then I made it so you can take this bottom and you can adjust that too. So again, smoke has to roll, it has to go down low and then out. You get more heat. Reason why everybody wants to do whatever you could do with the exhaust is you're gonna get heat off that. And that's an important part. And then up here, I'm gonna mount this fan that you're seeing. Uh, we'll show you that when it's done. It'll get mounted in replace of that, and I'll have to modify the cover. Uh, over here is a simple controller. Everybody says, oh, these things are so expensive. This little controller is like 35, 40 bucks. It's the brains of the operation. It knows water temperature, and you can set it up or down, whatever you want your water to be at, 180, 160, or whatever. Um, it has a reset function on it. And that controls your motor or your uh, draft control. Real simple. Just takes 110 power to it. We also, when we built this, uh, you can tell I modified. Why, you say, why has he got these so tall? Again, I think I learned the hard way. When all your fittings are down tight and you want to make any changes, you got to tear into the insulation. Remember, I'm going to pack this out this much insulation, and then I'm going to wrap it with bisqueen. We're going to show you that. Uh, so the Bisqueen keeps the insulation from getting wet, but this way if I make any changes or I got any issues, I don't have to have uh, insulation taken away, it's above it. And to me, it was worth changing because there's always something um, that you may want to do. I made a clean out too, and I'm glad I did because this became, depending on what wood you're burning, if you're burning um, really 
nasty wood with your good wood or whatever, there's a clean out. So my exhaust comes and of course it goes out the top, but any creosote or water or junk lays in there. I can rob that out and um, easy to clean. So I decided this time I'm gonna make even more changes. I wanna have a door down here because remember, this is all enclosed, and I just made it simple. So the door holds the pail, all the creosote, if there's any water from really damp wood or wet wood, it just goes down here, lays, and sits in here. Real simple. Um, I, it's something I felt like it was important because I, you know, you have, to, you have to clean it out every now and then. And it's one last mess. I also changed, this used to be built with all tin and one entry door made the big entry door, and I use the old door for electronics. So all my electronics are in the back of this unit. Uh, my pump controller, my aquastat that I've um, wired in so it controls, I can change zones, like if I want to shut down certain zones, if it's not a certain temperature of the boiler, I have control over that. And that was important to me, I learned that over time. Um, and uh, pump access is really important. And I just got to wire it and insulate it, and we'll give you an update. Um, for me, we you know we paint all winter, semi trucks and things like that, big stuff. And I need my shop to be really warm all the time, and this does it. And if you're thinking about saving some money and building um, some things just from scratch, you can tell I just use. Um, legs, uh, support legs that you can buy at, um, I had them for like your basement, support your basement, um, that way they're adjustable a little bit. The whole building's tied together so we just lift it with our skid loader and we put it back out there on the pad and we'll show you that working next time. Hopefully this helps you if you're going to build one. Um, double welded, everything was double welded with a stick, 7018 rod. Um, and so it was welded, uh, the inside box to this plate, and it was welded on the back tube. And then I cut this out, slid it in, and then got inside and did my second welds. It's held up good. It's been five years. It's overheated a bunch of times. You know, they get low on water, they'll overheat. But um, if you think about building one, here you go. Here's some ideas for you. Hopefully Johnny can help you out with the rest of the the um, information. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on our wood boiler. We're going to be updating you guys with any new info on it and once we get it wrapped up. So I think that's going to be it for this video. So please hit that like button. If this helped you out, please comment anything you need to know about this. And please subscribe for more on the updates. So please 